Hi. A little while ago, I started working on a, a Doppler a radar sensor, a sensor that's usually used uh, as a, a, a remote sensing device for uh, automatic door openers, um, uh, level sensors for uh, materials that are not liquids. For example, if you have uh, uh, a cement in uh, in a tower. Uh, this uh, this kind of sensors used uh, in, in that uh, in that environment, and the way they operate is that uh, you have a, a high frequency microwave uh, a frequency source uh, or an oscillator, and. Uh, you're measuring the mixing signal back from it. Well, this is all uh, a subject of another video. And what I would like to talk about today is the problem that I encountered. So, uh, the, the frequency range of an oscillator that I was trying to use for my radar system was in an X band, which is uh, about 10, 10.45, 10, 10.25 gigahertz range. Well, the problem is my uh, spectrum analyzer that I have does not go that far it goes only to six uh, gigahertz so here's the problem how do i uh, look at the signal generated by uh, an oscillator uh, at 10 gigahertz on my spectrum analyzer the obvious solution to this of course is to use is to down convert that frequency down to something that is in the range of my spectrum analyzer and then look at it um what I can solve that problem by using uh, a mixer. So, first thing I did is, of course, I looked up on internet, and of course, there are, there are many uh, uh, good sources explaining how I can actually uh, build a down converter that will operate, uh, that will allow me to look at signals which are lay on sound of range of my uh, spectrum analyzer uh, but uh, so here is the theory and I'm going to show you how I have done it in practice first thing I did of course I looked uh, online for uh, available uh, uh, sources on the subject and one thing I found is that uh, there's a document published by the same company that made my uh, spectrum analyzer which is <coughs> Uh, Roden Schwartz, and here they talk about um, extending the frequency range of spectrum analyzer in the ranges beyond uh, the ranges that they, uh, the models that they provide. For example, here they suggest that uh, you can use this technique to extend the range uh, beyond uh, 40 gigahertz, and 40 gigahertz is the maximum uh, that. Uh, they were uh, the maximum frequency uh, at which their spectrum analyzers were capable at the time of writing this document. Um, another interesting thing that they mention here of is that um, they provide an application uh, that's installed on a spectrum analyzer itself that you can use in order to do all the math associated with uh, um, external mixer. Uh, the spectrum analyzer that I, I have does not have that math, so I have to do, I have to repeat all these uh, calculations myself, and uh, these are not very complex uh, uh, calculations, and uh, um, I can, I was able to do it all easily in a, a, sp a simple spreadsheet. Well, here is the uh, setup that I used uh, in my experiment, um, in my measurements, should I say. Uh, first of all, <coughs> here's my spectrum analyzer that I have, uh, I've taken a mixer, uh, and the mixer has, a, it's a, this is a three port mixer. Um, I'm not going to talk about two port mixers. Uh, essentially, all the mixers have, are three port, uh, but some of them have only single port um, uh, with a filter inside that um, uh, let one frequency to go one way and um, I let an uh, other uh, frequency range to go back 
my my mixer the mixer i have purchased uh, have uh, uh, it's a um, free port uh, double balanced mixer um, and it's also a passive device um, so I have a signal generator uh, from where I feed the frequency at uh, 2 in my case there will be uh, 2.86 um, gigahertz uh, into the uh, local oscillator input of a mixer why I've chosen 2.86 is because since my uh, uh, spectrum analyzer is uh, capable of uh, uh, <coughs> covers everything up to 6 gigahertz I just chosen something below 3 gigahertz so I can clearly see the second harmonic of that uh, local oscillator signal on a spectrum analyzer and uh, the second p uh, port is uh, uh, RF port that's where I've connected um, and a receiving antenna uh, <coughs> that received the signal from my oscillator and in my case it's a gun oscillator I have another type of oscillator right here which I will also uh, um, uh, I use in my experiment here um, uh, as a result the product of the mixing uh, in, uh, that's uh, generated by a mixer is then fed into the spectrum analyzer. So this is this is very simple uh, setup. I will go into the types of mixers and uh, the physical designs of uh, mixers maybe a little bit and I'll show my mixer uh, that I used in my experiment but um, <coughs> uh, what's important here is is uh, that the math uh, that is behind this um, the, the measurements that I'm going to make and I'm going to explain the calculations that I, uh, I had to make in order to uh, look at um, a signal outside of the um, at the 10 gigahertz signal that uh, lies outside of the frequency range. Um, the mass is pretty simple. So basically, uh, the intermediate frequency, which is the product of uh, of mixing uh, the local oscillator and RF signal inside the mixer, um, is going to be. Uh, so the mixer is going to generate a range of uh, signals at uh, varying frequencies. And all of these uh, frequencies are uh, going to uh, be um, can be calculated uh, using this formula, uh, which is uh, this is this is the, the this means an absolute value because uh, this can be negative and uh, uh, positive, but obviously negative frequencies don't make uh, sense. So it's. Uh, a discrete multiplier m uh, frequency of local oscillator plus or minus uh, frequency uh, the the RF frequency the frequency of my signal multiplied by n so what it means there will be a multiple harmonics um, and uh, the first <coughs> if we look uh, here I have drawn a mixer again and uh, this is this is the configuration uh, where mixer is used for a uh, down conversion and that's what I'm doing in my case and here is uh, the the RF signal that I'm looking at uh, from my oscillator and this is the the, the the signal from a local oscillator I will be using uh, RF signal generator as my local oscillator in this case I already shown that and um, as a result, I'm expected to see a uh, number of uh, spike on my uh, signal uh, spectrum analyzer, uh, indicating the sh each each one showing the frequency, and all of them were going to be at different levels. Um, it's not as simple as just so what should I expect to see? So well, this is this is this is what uh, where. Um, the basically the reality kicks in um, 
the mixer that I have is um, <coughs> is um, So the mixer that I got is this um, is this device right here. It's made by um, Magnum Microwave. I, I believe the company uh, is being renamed or been, being uh, consumed by some other company. Uh, however, the the I was not even able to find the data sheet. But the seller who who from whom I purchased this uh, this mixer. Uh, supplied some information. I said that uh, the range of uh, RF frequency goes from uh, 6 uh, to 12 gigahertz and uh, IF input is um, designed for uh, DC to 2 gigahertz uh, which is this is this is how I've chosen to buy purchase this mixer because it's uh, clearly uh, all ports uh, lay within the range that are that's suitable for my sp specific measurement which is the 10 gigahertz uh, there are mixers that uh, pr allow some overlap between intermediate frequency and RF uh, low frequencies but those are more expensive and I wasn't able to find one that actually it has a broader range of intermediate frequencies and covers the 10 gigahertz uh, at least not for for, uh, for for reasonable amount of money so given that I have a specific mixer so um, here I have drawn a diagram of uh, the results that I am expecting uh, to see on a spectrum analyzer so the first of all I will probably see uh, a signal uh, from a local oscillator. So uh, every mixer has uh, characteristics uh, um, that show how much of the local oscillator signal this mixer is going to attenuate and how much of it will actually uh, pass right through the mixer and you will see it in uh, IF input and this is this is called an oscillation so um, looking at the data sheet of a uh, similar mixer I found that uh, I should expect somewhere around uh, minus uh, 27 dB of oscillation so I expect to see uh, the, the local uh, uh, oscillator signal to be a dominant in this, uh, in this picture and I'll explain why <coughs> and uh, next I'm going to look at and then there is going to be a second harmonic somewhere uh, which is uh, um, right here probably which is the double um, of local oscillator frequency so this is the first harmonic and the second harmonic uh, well, it all depends on, on the quality of my oscillator, uh, how uh, linear it is. Uh, well, I'm using the RF signal generator, which is pretty good. So I, I'm not expecting to see a large uh, spike in here. And uh, the second um, uh, thing that I have to mention is that I already said that, that this mixer is designed uh, so that the intermediate frequencies uh, should be in the range of uh, DC to 2 gigahertz uh, what it means of course is that everything above 2 gigahertz uh, frequency uh, everything above 2 gigahertz uh, and everything that comes out of IF above that uh, above that threshold is going to be uh, attenuated and uh, can be either severely attenuated or little so 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 here I've shown in a dot line uh, that this is the the level of attenuation uh, it's not exact but that's what I'm expecting <coughs> and that also um, limits the 
the signals uh, or harmonic signals, uh, the, the the mixing product signals that I'm going to uh, I will be expected to see at uh, and calculate, and for which I will I will I will be able to calculate the power for uh, for this. Uh, uh, for the signals uh, using the uh, the data from a data sheet so <coughs> besides like I mentioned uh, besides if you if, if you're just following this formula besides the the local oscillator signal what I expect to see is um, um, a signal which is uh, a sum of two which is a uh, uh, sum of 286 and uh, 10 uh, gigahertz in my case and that's going to be 12.8 gigahertz which lays outside of the range of the spectrum analyzer so I'm not going to see that I'm not going to see the signal itself of course um, and uh, I'm going to see uh, the second harmonic of a local oscillator and then uh, we, we start to see signals that are um, uh, mixing products so <coughs> looking at the harmonics in a range of let's say uh, uh, 2 uh, to 4 or to 5 usually you don't expect to see anything beyond 7th harmonic or so on but um, so when the multiplier is at seven, the power is is uh, is so low, so you might not be able to see it. Well, it all, actually, it all depends. Uh, I was able to see everything up to the fifth harmonic, and that's why it all worked. So the second one is uh, uh, two uh, local uh, oscillator frequencies minus FRF, and it's going to be the negative. Uh, the result's going to be with a negative uh, a value but uh, since we take a module of that it's going to show up uh, here somewhere in the range of 4.8 gig gigahertz so um, if we're going uh, to the next uh, a product uh, mixing product will be uh, free local oscillator frequencies minus one um, RF frequency in which case it's going to be uh, somewhere around uh, 1.8 gigahertz uh, it's, this is around here uh, what follows that is um, four local oscillator frequencies uh, minus uh, FRF this one and uh, five local oscillator frequencies minus FRF this one comes out with plus but just you take a module of it and it's going to be at around uh, 3.7 well in all these calculations I'm basically assuming that the signal that comes out uh, from uh, uh, my uh, GAN oscillator will be in a range somewhere around uh, 10.4 uh, 10.25 gigahertz uh, I could be wrong as well So uh, how I'm going to uh, proceed with this, um, <coughs> knowing the, the frequencies that I expect uh, uh, to see, and knowing the value of each, uh, the, 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 the frequency of each spike on, on this diagram, <coughs> first of all, I'll have to take a guess. Uh, if I, from this formula right here, if I take... Uh, um, calculations from the intermediate frequencies expected uh, then I can say uh, it's M and it's just a, a multiplier um, but um, I use M because uh, of the of the formula here because I use um, any letter uh, works here so M multiplied by uh, a frequency of local oscillator plus FIF so if I'm looking at the signal, let's say if I see um, I have a strong signal at 1.8 gigahertz in my case um, so what I'm going to, to, to So, 
So for example, if I see uh, a spike at 1.8 gigahertz, <coughs> this spike uh, can result from mixing uh, different RF frequencies um, uh, with a uh, local oscillator signal. So th this is where I have to take an, uh, a best guess. So if I'm looking at, at this, uh, in this case, uh, if I have a 1.8 gigahertz um, um, IF signal coming from my mixer and uh, knowing the value of the local oscillator that I set on my uh, RF signal generator I have number of um, possible RF frequencies that this this uh, this uh, this spike can be result of uh, and uh, and this is where uh, we should go to uh, and look at uh, all these calculations uh, on a spreadsheet so um, here is a spreadsheet that I've de that I've designed to do the calculations uh, in my case this has already been populated by uh, a numbers from my um, uh, the previous uh, experiment so um, what I got here here is the here's the values for M and N uh, that I've just uh, uh, have uh, multiple permutations of M of local oscillator frequency and RF frequency here you see here and here are the resulting values that uh, you should expect to see uh, <coughs> on uh, intermediate frequency port and here is uh, the this is the, the frequencies of uh, a mixing product uh, here is the sum of uh, local oscillator uh, m local oscillator frequency and local uh, rf frequencies and here's the difference um, well uh, the first of all let's talk about the gas products so here i uh, Here's the formula that I've just uh, uh, shown on the paper, which is this is M uh, local oscillating frequencies minus uh, uh, frequency, uh, intermediate frequency, and then uh, same uh, thing for the sum of those frequencies. And um, each one is, is going up uh, using this value. So if I if I mix uh, uh, one of them, we see 4.695. So this is this is the guess for uh, an RF frequency uh, that I'm looking at. So uh, first guess is uh, 4.695, and that's given if I if I look at the signal which is at uh, 1.8348. Uh, gigahertz and that was the intermediate frequency signal that I looked at uh, when I uh, punched in these numbers the second guess is uh, 7.55 still very much outside of the range that I expect from my uh, uh, oscillator and the next frequency is 10.415 gigahertz and this is this is pretty pretty well match uh, with what I expect to see the next one will be 13.275 uh, I don't expect to see that uh, because uh, well basically I'm using the waveguide and that's outside of the range that this waveguide will pass through uh, once I have calculated I've chosen the the, the best matching uh, frequency for possible RF signal now I enter it right here and uh, I also provide the value for the local oscillator frequency generated my RF generator and then um, uh, here um, I look at uh, the range of uh, signals and I should expect to see these four IF signals on my spectrum analyzer uh, first at 4.69 
second one, uh, which is matching the, the intermediate frequencies that I used in the original calculations. Another one is at uh, 1.02 and 388. Well, the, the number on the left, which is M number, uh, the, the bigger the number, oh, this, is, this is basically indicates the harmonic that I'm looking at. The, the bigger the number here, the uh, more attenuated the signal uh, will be. However, uh, if you remember, I mentioned that uh, the mixer that I'm using is going to is going to attenuate everything that's outside of the range for the intermediate frequency port. In which case, I actually expect to see this uh, to be the strongest signal at 1.83, because. Um, uh, or uh, at 1.02 gigahertz going to be next because the the the, the second harmonic signals it's at 4.69 but that outside of what the intermediate port of that mixer is uh, uh, going to pass i uh, i found uh, several uh, mixers uh, online uh, but uh, not all of them for n not for all of them i was able to find a, a data sheet um why I needed the data sheet, so why all uh, frequency uh, ranges of the, the 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 mixer obviously is not enough. You have to worry about other parameters such as uh, uh, um, the noise generated by the the the, the mixer, whether it's active uh, mixer or it's a passive uh, mixer. It could be also a single balanced mixer or a double balanced mixer. The uh, difference between single balanced mixer and double balanced mixer is that double balanced uh, mixer uh, does not pass um, either RF or a low uh, frequency through into the intermediate uh, frequency port. Uh, and there are very good uh, videos that I found on YouTube that I will uh, uh, link in, in the description for this video that explains uh, the difference between them and how they work. Uh, basically, the, the I have uh, found a, a passive uh, double bounce mixer, that's the most co common kind you can find. and. Um, Although I wasn't able to find the exact uh, data sheet for my device, uh, which is MC36P, uh, um, what I discovered is that this company, uh, which uh, I believe uh, called the Spectrum Microwave, uh, makes mixers that are exactly the same and they're using exactly the same um, model numbers, uh, which makes me to believe that uh, what I have uh, is uh, a mixer that's either been custom made or it's just an older model uh, or some kind of special model. <coughs> what is important, uh, uh, the next the most important thing for me is to find out what kind of uh, uh, power I should uh, feed into the local oscillator port for this mixer to work. And if you notice here, there's a small note uh, um, uh, which says usage uh, low drives are up to 2 dB below and 3 dB above nominal. So what it means is that um, it's when you have a mixer and you're going to uh, use it uh, for, your, uh, for your test, you have to be able to generate uh, local oscillator signal of exact uh, 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 level uh, or within a very very uh, narrow range and if, I, if I'm talking about um, my case so I'm looking at here is MC36P and here they indicate um, for uh, MC5X MS numbers that the, the digit the second digit after MC is uh, uh, indicates the power um, that expected uh, uh, for a, lo a local oscillator port. Uh, other parameters that can uh, come in very handy is, of course, this is an isolation. Uh, I mentioned before that 
parts of the local oscillator signal will go through uh, into IF and this is how uh, how much these are uh, attenuated um, and here is the conversion loss uh, this is this is because this is a passive uh, uh, mixer these values are um, uh, should be with uh, uh, how this is a negative value so this is this is how much less um, uh, the power of the signal uh, that I expect to see uh, on output um, after it's been mixed uh, with lock uh, with a low signal so here I have my setup here uh, so this is uh, um, an, uh, an adapter um, this is a, a coax uh, a to waveguide and ad adapter um, it's uh, it's a VR90 um, waveguide adapter I don't have um, a horn antenna attached to it and um, a reason why is that I, I've ordered one and I have another one but it simply doesn't match this uh, this specific adapter and it has a uh, um, um, RF diode in there uh, right now <coughs> but this uh, should work as well so that the the input uh, from from this uh, um, uh, coaxial adapter a waveguide to coax. Um, I feed my signal into the RF input of uh, of a mixer, and uh, another um, uh, signal uh, from uh, RF signal generator that I have down there below is uh, uh, fed into local oscillator input, and it uses uh, RG45 using RG45 cable. Uh, uh, that's the only cable I have for appropriate lens for this uh, purposes. Uh, this um, <coughs> uh, RG42 cable, uh, coax cable, uh, uh, which is the IF uh, intermediate frequency output of this mixer, uh, goes into um, into the input of my spectrum analyzer. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to use uh, uh, a local uh, the oscillator, 10 gigahertz, any kind of 10 gigahertz uh, um, signal source. What I'm using here is uh, a part that I pulled out from, well actually I didn't really pull it out, I was think it's shipped as like this. Uh, this was uh, from uh, the, the, the Doppler radar from um, automatic door opener and it uses uh, here uh, there, are the, there are two patch antennas one on receiving side and one on sending side and it uses um, dielectric uh, oscillator inside so if I'm going to position it really close since I don't have a ho the antenna um, right next to the um, um, to the uh, the adapter and that's where I should expect to receive uh, signals in about uh, 10 gigahertz range. So I changed the resolution bandwidth uh, for this case uh, to make the signals more clear. Uh, that was mis my mistake because I uh, I put a preset. Uh, I, I pressed the preset button uh, previously. So <coughs> now you can see there is a stronger uh, uh, a local uh, a low signal uh, right in the middle. Uh, and then there's a second uh, signal, if you go to the next peak, it's at 5.719 gigahertz, uh, which is the second harmonic of the, of the local oscillator signal that's coming uh, right through. And uh, my local oscillator uh, uh, signal right now at uh, uh, 12 dB. So let's see what happens if I turn on the power for the, uh, the 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 Doppler sensor that I I have shown earlier. I'm powering it up, and uh, immediately you can see that there is a there is a spike um, uh, shows up right here. And if we um, go back to the peak, and then the, so look at the next peak. So this is a. Uh, 
the signal at uh, 1.97 um, to look at this uh, more closer and well basically first of all let's say let's take a look at uh, at other peaks in 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 this that shows up uh, right here so the next peak will be uh, uh, again uh, 571 that's the uh, the second harmonic of a low signal that's going through and the next one is uh, 892 uh, megahertz uh, signal and the next peak is at uh, let me So, just change, change the bandwidth a little bit. Yes, now you can see that um, this one at 3.754. is at 4.83.2 and another one at uh, 10 1.84 um, gigahertz so <coughs> the strongest out of the IF signals that we can see in this is uh, is this uh, right here which is at uh, 1.96 gigahertz so let's center on that frequency first and then we're gonna look at this signal closer we're going to change the span to 10 megahertz so here's the here's this uh, the signal I'm looking at it and uh, let me check and change the span down to 2 megahertz even and then uh, center that and then change the bandwidth so what we're looking at is is um, a signal um, from uh, the uh, the Doppler sensor uh, at somewhere at around 10 25 or so gigahertz uh, mixed with the low signal from my RF generator and I can look at it right here well the inconvenience of course is that I have to um, um, uh, do my own uh, math in order to find out what exactly is the frequency of that uh, of that uh, uh, signal and uh, another thing that I have to actually uh, mention is that if I change the frequency of the local oscillator um, say by uh, 100 kilohertz uh, let me do one thing first I can just uh, here it is I think Yes, if I set it to max, then the value will will be corresponding to the to the maximum. So if I uh, um, if I change it by 100 kilohertz, um, the frequency that you can see on the, on the, on the on the spectrum analyzer um, shifts by 300 kilohertz. And the reason is that we are looking at a signal that's uh, has been uh, coming from a mixer, and as you remember, there is a, a we we're looking at a signal which is um, a, a difference between um, RF signal and uh, free local oscillator frequencies. So this is the the the. Uh, the first harmonic, I'm not sure if that's the uh, correct uh, 
uh, way of using this term. So every time uh, we change the frequency, uh, the resulting change is by uh, by three. Uh, okay, I think it will be more visible if I uh, change the span to uh, one uh, megahertz in this case, and you can see that it will jump. I'm changing it from by 100 kilohertz it jumps by three, uh, three vertical lines so that's uh, that's another thing you have to remember at and then also when I I'm measuring the, the or tuning my circuit or tuning my oscillator in this case um, I depend on the stability of my local oscillator uh, three times more uh, than if I would have used uh, it without extended uh, external. So here I have replaced um, the, the, the small uh, Doppler sensor uh, uh, for the door opener uh, with my gun oscillator and um, we can look uh, see here there's a much uh, obviously there is a uh, this the gun oscillator generates much stronger signal and you can uh, I can see it right away and if I go to uh, um, see let's uh, let's find the uh, uh, 579 the third um, uh, another peak and this time this one is uh, at 1.85 gigahertz so my uh, gun oscillator actually uh, produces uh, a signal at a different frequency rather than uh, that uh, 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 sensor and then if we center on this uh, span I'm going to use 10 Oh no, 20 megahertz, yeah. So, um, if I change the span to megahertz and the bandwidth so I just I just turned on my um, gun oscillator and it's uh, still uh, um, changes uh, its temperature it's going to uh, uh <coughs> it's going to be warming up and then you can see if I every time I I touch this is this is a, a big solid piece of uh, aluminum that I used uh, to machine it out of uh, but still every time I touch uh, anything on this uh, it affects uh, affects the frequency that it's, it's basically generating but uh, let me see if I still have the outer peak now, and you can see how it's uh, it's basically I'm not touching anything how it's how it's uh, how it's jumping left and right, and obviously uh, the gun uh, diode oscillators are less stable than um, dielectric resonators, uh, even in the cheap uh, dielectric resonators, even in the cheap <coughs> uh, sensors that I have uh, I have I've shown earlier. Uh, let me change the span to one uh, one megahertz. And uh, previously, uh, I was actually f I found it's less stable. And uh, today, when I started making video, it uh, it behaves <laughs> much better than uh, than before. But you can see the drift uh, that's obviously uh, happening. Uh, due to it uh, uh, slowly uh, warming up I don't see any other reason why would that be happening uh, because um, 
it's been bypassed and everything I can uh, I change the frequency generated by uh, by this oscillator within of course a certain range by changing the size of uh, of uh, of the cavity that uh, where the gun uh, diode is uh, is placed so I can um, and this is how I designed it uh, myself I can pull this uh, uh, this block out and uh, by uh, sliding in in or out I can tune in the frequency at which um, the, the cavity will oscillate and, and I'm going to start moving the um, the, the, the slider inside the, the gun oscillator and by changing you can see that by changing the size of, of uh, the cavity inside the oscillator how the frequency changes uh, significantly so you can see that uh, it's not only changes the frequencies also um, affects the power you see that cavity always uh, almost uh, stop oscillating when it's when I uh, pull it back uh, too much and then it's it's almost at the same level uh, within certain range so I can tune in if I set the marker to again to follow the maximum I can tune in to 105, 106, so let's say 1.000 gigahertz. So according to my calculations in order to um, uh, set my uh, oscillator frequency to uh, 10 uh, point 25 gigahertz um, this uh, I need to s to make sure that this intermediate frequency stays at uh, 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 1.67 uh, sharp. So I'm going to now slowly uh, move the the back wall of the cavity to where it's. Well, that's it for this video. I hope that someone will find it uh, useful or interesting. <laughs> it's not the same thing. All right, goodbye.